Now, a few words about the cross-examination you saw. So Fitzpatrick is probably the single most impressive lawyer I have ever seen, and I've seen a few. Okay? But let me just talk about a few things you saw. You saw a couple of things which I refer to as lawyer tricks. And I don't mean to say that they're bad, because you know, I'm a lawyer. I use the same thing. Well, I'll call them this lawyer tactics. And one of the common tactics a lawyer does is you ask a question that you know there's no right answer to. Why do you ask that question that there's no right answer to? Because you want to force them into an answer that doesn't sound good. I'll give you an example. Mrs. Castor, isn't your daughter a psychotic monster? Is there a good answer to that question that would have satisfied any of you? No, there isn't. That's why the question was asked. Because if Stacy says, yes, my daughter is a psychotic monster, you all recoil in horror that this woman is attacking her daughter. If she says, no, she's not a psychotic monster, well, now guess what? That means Stacy's guilty. There is no right answer to it. Another example. That aggressive cross-examination. I wish I could be that skilled. I'm not. I can't do it like that. I just can't. Why was it like that? Why? Because, in the end, there's only two possible responses that Stacy can have to it. She either breaks down, in which case the prosecution points at her and says, look, you know what? When I was, just a I was asking her questions and she broke down. An innocent person doesn't break down. An innocent person never breaks down. Why? Because they're innocent. Or, as in the case here, if she doesn't break down, they say, hey, look, what a cold and heartless killer she was. And you saw it from the stand. Again, it's fantastic lawyering, but it's not evidence. It doesn't mean anything. Would any of us know how we would behave on that witness stand under that cross-examination? I sure as heck don't know how I would. Now let's contrast the credibility of what Stacy told you with what Ashley told you. Ashley told you that she was given a single drink around noon in that vicinity on Thursday, and then she woke up in the hospital on Friday. Now, first off, if Ashley is lying about that drink, then we know Ashley is guilty. Period. End of story. Okay? If she's lying, because there's no other reason to lie about it other than that she tried to kill herself and she's guilty. So, what do we know? Well, we know from the experts, and they all agree, that <clears throat> at 8 o'clock, some 17 hours later, Ashley's BAC is 0.14. And everybody agrees that that couldn't possibly happen from a single drink. It's not possible. Not only the alcohol is a problem, but if Ashley had taken enough drugs, or if Stacy had given Ashley enough drugs that day before at noon to make those levels at the hospital, Ashley probably would have been dead 10 times over, long before anybody ever found her. But we know that's not true. So where does the prosecution go from here? Well, now, and the experts agree on this, we're probably going to hear that Ashley consumed the alcohol and the pills sometime around maybe 4 o'clock in the morning or so. And again, the experts, this isn't like the computer experts, which is like math, where 2 plus 2 equals 4, and with a computer you know or you don't know. With toxicology, you know, the body's handled a little bit differently, some a little more, some a little less, but they gave you a window. Suffice it to say, it's either late at night or early in the morning of Friday, whichever it be. So now, let's ask ourselves some important questions about this. How does Ashley Wallace have a bottle of vodka and at least 60 pills in her system? How do they get into her at 4 o'clock in the morning? How is that possible? And ladies and gentlemen, the answer to that question is literally the answer to this case. 
And the answer is a simple one. It's not possible for Stacy to have done it. Now, why do I say 60 pills? Remember Dr. Jengo? He told you that based upon his analysis, the absolute bare minimum number of pills that Ashley Wallace would have had to consume to get to those levels was 60. Now, back to the old fashioned one. 60 pills. A conservative estimate. And he told you that it's probably more. And I submit to you that maybe it's a lot more. So let's take a look at this. We know that a bottle of Lexapro was found near Ashley and the script was for 90 pills. We know it was empty. So that's 90. We know there's an amoxicillin bottle with a prescription for 29 left. It's 11. We know there's an empty hydrocodone bottle. That script was for 24. We know there was an empty Ritalin bottle that was recently refilled. Ashley's own pills. 30. We know that there was a bottle of Ambien. 30 pills as well. Empty. Now, I'm not saying this is exact, or this is the actual number of pills. And this isn't even all the medications they found. But take a look at this. Look at this number. And that is probably still a conservative number. 185 pills. Now I ask you this. How do you get a bottle of vodka and 185 pills into somebody while they're asleep, involuntarily? How do you do it? There's a simple answer. You can't. There's a principle out there. It's called Occam's razor. It's a fancy, word, it's a fancy thing for saying, look, the simplest answer is usually almost always the truth. And in this case, the simplest answer of all is that Stacy Castor did not murder David. The simplest answer is that Stacy did not try to kill her daughter and frame her for it. That is the simplest answer. No matter how you labor over this case, no matter how much time you put into it, and I'll ask you, Take your time. Read everything you want to read. Those tapes that we couldn't play for you because the audio is off. Ask to have them played. I'll send our laptop back there and you can play it yourself. Look at all of it. Look at everything. No matter how much you labor over it, no matter how much you don't want to believe a 12-year-old is capable of doing this, all you can do is take a guess. There are only two people on this whole planet who actually know what happened. Everybody else is taking a guess. And you cannot guess whether or not somebody is guilty of murder. You can't take somebody's life away because of a guess. You have to know it. You have to know it beyond all reasonable doubt. I thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen.